ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Amos and Andy Show. If you've been reading the classified ads section in some of the big daily newspapers this past week, you may have come across an ad in the personal column which revealed that Andrew H. Brown is very anxious to establish contact with one Madam Queen. Andy has been unsuccessful in his search. Right now, he's in his office unloading his troubles to his close friend, Amos. Well, I'm sorry I couldn't get here no sooner. What's on your mind, Andy? Sit down, Amos. I got to talk to somebody. And you as the one. Yeah, I ain't seen you all week. Uh, What's the matter? I gotta find her. Uh, find who? Amos, I gotta find Madam Queen. Madam Queen? You ain't seen her for six, eight years, did you? That's right. Yeah, the last time you heard from her is when she sued you for breach of promise. Yeah, that's right. But Amos, this time it means something. Yeah, I guess that old saying is true that love has its ups and downs, but an old flame never dies. Is that it? Well, all I know is, when I met Madam Queen, that flame was like a 200-watt bulb. (laughs) After a while, it flickered down to 100 watts, and before I knowed it, the whole thing got short-circuited. Yeah, well, how come all of a sudden, out of a clear... Well, let me tell you the whole story. And listen, Amos, promise you ain't going to tell this to nobody. Oh, I ain't going to say nothing. Well, Amos, years ago, when I was in love with Madam Queen, we was talking about getting married. And she made me save every cent I could and invest it. Oh, yeah, I remember something about that, yeah. Yeah, you see, we was going to get ourselves a love nest. The whole thing mounted to a little over $400. And I took the money and invested it with the bond and realty investment company. Oh, yeah, I know now. And that whole thing went bad, didn't it? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. But here's some news. Amos, I is a rich man. A rich? What you got there? Here's a letter from the company. It say that they is done reorganized and that the uh, former stockholders can get out their money plus the interest and dividends. And look at this line right here. It say your holdings in our company right now mount to $600. $600? And you can get that money, huh? But here's the catch. Yeah. It's in the last paragraph. <laughs> he say here... We note that your stock is jointly registered in the names of yourself and one Madam Queen. Uh Therefore, the application for release of these funds to you must be signed by both parties. Oh, now I see. Yeah, that is the situation you was in there. Yeah, all these business letters is the same. The first part tells you what you're going to get, and the second part locks it up so you can't get it. Uh, Tell me this. Has you got any idea where Madam Queen is? Well, now, that's the trouble. I can't find her. Hey, wait a minute. There's Gabby Gibson across the street now. See him over there talking to that fella? Oh, yeah. I ain't seen him for years. Do he still talk as much as he used to? Oh, he talked more than he ever used to. But he's helped me with the case, though. Yeah, what's Gabby doing about it? Well, you see, he is figuring out from the law standpoint how I can get around the Madam Queen signature thing. Yeah, here he come now. Yeah, he say it was going to drop in. Maybe he got the whole thing figured out. I sure hope he got a loophole for me. Yeah, he ain't changed a bit, is he? Come in. Uh, hello there, Gabby. Oh, hello there, gentlemen. Hello, gentlemen. Well, Amos. Hello, Amos. Glad to see you. Glad to see you. Yeah. How is you? I ain't seen you for a long time. Oh, I was fine, thank you. Yes, indeed. Very fine, Amos. 100%. I'm feeling 100%. Yeah. Uh, listen, Gabby. Listen here. Tell me the news, will you? Is you done figured out if it's all right for me to get that money by me signing Madam Queen's signature? Well, Andy, I got the whole thing figured out for you. The whole thing. I done found a way. I really done found a way. That's what it is. Nothing to it. Nothing to worry about. Now, you know the way Madam Queen writes her name. You done see that. You done see that yourself. You know her handwriting. You know that. All you got to do is not say nothing to nobody. Not a word to nobody. Just pick out the place where her name go. Just pick out the place. Get yourself some pen and ink, some good black ink. And then you sign Madam Queen. Write down Madam Queen. Be sure and spell it right. And then you can get the money. The company going to pay you. They going to hand you the cash. It's all yours. All yours. There's only one thing, one little thing about it. You might go to jail. <laughs> Yeah, that show took a bad turn there all of a sudden, didn't it? Yeah, it sure did. 
Well, listen, Gabby, suppose I never finds Madam Queen and can't get her signature. Did that mean that the company going to keep the money? Now, wait a minute, Andy. Wait a minute now. That money belongs to you. That is your money. That money does not belong to the company. Not to the company, but to you. Don't forget, you put the money in. You're the one to put the money in. You invest the money. Nobody can take it out. Nobody. They can't take it out because the money is yours. So long as the money is yours and all yours, but they ain't going to give it to you. That, uh, that's the law, huh? Oh, that's the law as I know it, as I know it. Oh, I've been working on your case, Mr. Andy. I've been really working on your case. Yeah, Andy, I think you has just got to find Madam Queen. That's the only way. Yeah, you right. I got to find her. Now, listen, Amos, whatever you do, don't say nothing to the kingfish about this money. Because he'd have eight companies organized within an hour. Oh, I promise you, I ain't going to say nothing. <laughs> And, Gabby, don't you say nothing about this, neither. Oh, I ain't gonna say nothing, Andy. Not a word for me, not a word. I wouldn't tell a soul. I wouldn't even tell my closest friend, not my closest friend, because I ain't the talking type. Oh, <laughs> uh, come in, come in. Oh, excuse me, Brother Kingfish, but there's a man out here. Uh, what kind of a man is it, Lightning? Do he look like a bill collector or something? Uh, yeah, sir. He looks exactly like a bill collector, all right. Uh, the man is looking for Mr. Andy, though, not you. I told him that you was the only one here. Oh, so Andy's in trouble, huh? Uh, send the man in. Uh, right this way, mister. Come in, come in. Uh, pardon me, I came to see Mr. Andrew H. Brown. I uh, have this lodge hall as addre- his address. Do you know where I can find Mr. Brown? Uh, well, I don't know him very well. Uh, cause any money deals Mr. Brown gets messed up in, I don't have nothing to do with. Uh, what do you want to see him about? It's about a money matter, all right. Uh, he don't hang around here very much no more. Uh, sometimes he don't get around here for two, three years at a time. <laughs> but you know Mr. Brown? Well, it's, uh, he's just a casualty acquaintance, that's what it is. <laughs> you see, as the head of the lodge, uh, I has got a hobnob with the riffraff, same as anybody else, you oh. see what I mean? Well, uh, this matter with Mr. Brown involves six hundred dollars. Six hundred dollars? That's right. Tell you the truth, mister, I don't even know the man. <laughs> well, of course, until Mr. Brown gets this other signature, we can't give him the six hundred dollars. Yeah, well, like I say, uh... Oh, excuse me, mister. The acoustics in this room ain't good for my hearing here. <laughs> Did you say give him $600? Yes, that's right. Oh, Andy Brown. That's my partner. Your partner? <laughs> yeah. I thought you said you just knew him casually. Yeah, well, uh, I mean about that. Ha, uh, <laughs> ha, He's a silent partner, that's what I mean. <laughs> You know how it is with them silent partners. Sometimes they're so silent they don't even come around. Oh, yes, yeah, sir. Well, as soon as you see him, you tell him that the man was here from the Bond and Realty Investment Company. We're still waiting for Madam Queen's signature. And as soon as we have it, we can give Mr. Brown the $600. Madam Queen's signature? Uh, oh, yeah, yes. I'll tell him, sir. Yeah. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's why Andy's looking for Madam Queen. Now, if the old kingfish could find out where she is first and then give Andy that information for 50 percent, mm-hmm, I think I got something. Yes, well, that sounds very interesting, Kingfish. Oh, uh, yeah, Henry. I know that Andy ain't found Madam Queen yet. And I'll cut you in on the deal if you'll just give me her last note address off of the insurance policy that she had with you. Well, here's the policy right here. Yeah, now let me see it here. Uh, ah, here it is right here. 1492 South Flower Avenue, Trenton, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Henry, I is off to Trenton. Now listen. Don't let Andy know that I is looking for her. Oh, no, not a word for me. Now, listen, uh, I got to get to Trenton, Henry, as fast as I can. Let me have three dollars, will you? Now, Kingfish, I ain't got it. We're having a dinner party at my house tomorrow night, and my funds are all tied up in a pot roast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I got to get the money someplace. Uh, uh, wait, I know what I'll do. I'll borrow it from Andy. From Andy? Kingfish, do you think that's the right thing to do under the circumstances? Oh, what do you mean? 
Well, after all, when you was going to hit a man over the head with a blackjack, you don't ask him to take off his hat. <laughs> oh, but this is emergency, Henry. I was going to borrow this money from Andy. <laughs> Well, Kingfish, having discovered Madame Queen's last known address, is on his way over to Andy's to borrow the fare to Trenton. Andy, in the meantime, is in his office poring over some of the answers to the ads he had in the paper. Amos is with him. Oh, you got some answers to your ads in the newspaper already, huh, Andy? Yeah, I just come back from the post office. Most of them look like phonies to me. Listen to this one. Yeah, read it. Dear Box 27, <laughs> I knew a Madame Quinn... About ten years ago in Biloxi, Mississippi. She must be the one you was looking for. Please send reward. Signed, Frank Wilson. <laughs> yeah, that one's nothing. No, here's one on a postcard. Dear Box 27, if you really want to find Madam Queen, why don't you drop in at Joe's Oyster House? Everybody eats at Joe's. Open all night. <laughs> yeah, that ain't much help. Uh, what's the next one? Well, here's a letter here. Hmm, postmark Trenton, New Jersey. Dear Box 27, I am positive I can lead you to the whereabouts of Madam Queen. Signed, Mrs. Ralph Rogers, 1492 South Flower Avenue, Trenton, New Jersey. Say, Amos, that really sounds like something there, don't it? Yeah, she knows what she's talking about. I guarantee you that one ain't no phony. Amos, I is going to Trenton. Yeah, I think you're doing the right thing. Yeah, listen, lend me about three dollars, will you? <laughs> well, Andy, I, I'd be glad to, but I tell you the truth, I clear, I just ain't got it. Yeah, well, I know you would if you had it. I certainly would. Yeah, well, I got to get the money somewhere. Get there. Hey, wait a minute. Here come the kingfish across the street. <laughs> oh, boy. I'll give him a build up to the sky and get the money from him. Yeah, well, I'll get going then. Yeah. Ah, uh, hiya, King V. Come in, come well, in. Well, hello there, Amos. Uh, hi, Andy, old pal. Yeah. Well, I'll leave you two fellas together. I'll get to work. So long. So long. So, so long. long, Amos, so long. Kingfish, I was glad to see you. See him to you. Oh, yeah, you is one of the greatest friends I got. One of the greatest? The greatest? Yeah. <laughs> like the man say once, if you can go through life and get one good friend, you is lucky. And you is that friend. Oh, I is the closest one in the world to you, Andy. And one thing about us. When one of us goes to the other one for something, we never turn each other down. Ah, uh, well, look how long we've known each other. Uh, if you can't help a friend, who can you help? Uh, well, we is almost like brothers. No, closer than brothers. We is like sisters. <laughs> yeah. You're right. Where would you find the love and friendship and affection that I got for you with two brothers. Oh, it's a beautiful thing, Andy. Uh, it's touching, all right. Now, Kingfish, what I want to ask you is this. By the way, Andy, uh, will you let me have three dollars? Yeah. I... <laughs> now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's what I was going to ask you. It couldn't have been. That's exactly what I was going to ask you. Well, I asked you first. But it was my turn to talk. Now, don't give me no argument, brother. <laughs> Now, listen, you chiseler. Uh, ain't nobody no bigger chiseler than you is. Oh, there ain't, huh? You heard me. Uh, we sure forgot that brother stuff. <laughs> listen, Andy, will you let me have three dollars? No, I ain't got it. Uh, tell me this, what you want with three dollars? Uh, who, me? Well, you asked for it, didn't you? Uh, well, I'm, uh... uh well, what is that in your pocket, Kingfish? A railroad timetable? Oh, uh, where? Oh, uh... Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, uh... Uh, I want to go on a little vacation, and uh, that, that's why I want to borrow the money. Vacation? Where is you going to go on a vacation for $3? Out on the fire escape? <laughs> oh, I thought I'd go out someplace inexpensive, like uh, the Grand Canyon. Mm. <laughs> uh, you know, they don't charge no admission there. See that big hole there? Get down in there. Can't nobody see you. Mm -hmm. Get away from the trouble and worries. Hide from all the people that bothers you. It's a restful hole in the ground, all right. Uh, I like a low spot. Yeah. Well, I need $3 for business reasons. Uh, listen, Andy, you need money, I need money. 
Let's be fair and face this thing 50-50. We'll pawn your watch. <laughs> what you mean, pawn my watch? This watch that I got has got a lot of sediment to it. And I ain't gonna put it in no pawn shop. What do you mean, sediment? Well, this watch was given to me as a Christmas gift. By who? Well, I used to go with two gals, and they both lived in the same apartment building, and they chipped in and bought me this watch. <laughs> Look, look at here. Look at the graven on the back of this. Look at that sediment on there, boy. Let me see you. Uh, to end, uh, I love you, Jan. Me too, Alice. <laughs> uh, crazy women. Now, listen. I got to get $3. Well, so is I. Well, ain't no sense of me wasting my time with you. I got a better idea. Goodbye. So long. Say hello to the Grand Canyon for me. <laughs> Lightning, come here. Ah, uh, yes, sir, Brother Kingfish. Uh, you ain't got no watch or something like that, has you, Lightning? Ah, uh, no, sir. I ain't never had no jewelry. Mm hmm. <laughs> you know, Lightning, you look awful sick. Why don't you take that suit off and lay down on the couch and rest? Ah, <laughs> uh, I don't feel sick that I know, though. Well, you were sick, all right. Ain't you tired and run down and weak? Uh, well, I most always use your lives. I gonna start taking vitamin tablets. That's <laughs> uh, Lightning, I never see nobody look as bad as you do. Here, let me help you off with your coat. And I tell you what I'll do, Lightning. While you was laying here, convalescing, I'll take your suit out and have it clean and pressed for you. Well, I done I had it pressed last night, Kingfish, under the mattress. Yeah, well, you won't have it done right. Uh, get the pants off, too. But, uh, Kingfish, while I laying here on the couch without my suit on, I liable to catch my death of cold. Yeah, that's all the more reason for having your suit pressed. When you go to the hospital, you want to look nice and neat, don't you? <laughs> uh, yes, sir. I never thought of that. Give me those pants, Lightning. All right, I'll be running along. You lay down there on the couch now and get your strength back. You got nothing to worry about. Uh, Joe, uh, I got something different this time. Uh, how much can you give me on this suit? Uh, Kingfish, this is a new one. You ain't never had this in here before, is you? Uh, no, I ain't, Joe. Well, to see this little slick, uh, this suit must fit you awful tight, Kingfish. Well, I just help out a sick friend. Well, let me see. How much you want? Uh, how about uh, six or seven dollars? I'll let you have three dollars on it. Well, that's what I figured we'd dick it down to. I'll take it. <laughs> All right. Here you are. Three dollars, and here's your ticket. Yeah, I'll pick this up uh, tonight or in the morning. I gotta catch a train right away for Trenton. All right, Kingfish. Yeah, well, so long, Joe. Thank you. Hello? Honest Joe's pawn shop. Joe, this is Andy Brown. I got a watch for Christmas that looks like it's gold. If I bring it down there, will you let me have three dollars on it? Well, you got to bring it down, Andy. If it's if if it's any good, I'll let you have three. Yeah, well, it's got some crazy graven on the back from a couple of silly gals, but you can scratch that off if you want to. Well, bring it down, Andy. Right away, cause I got to catch the first bus to Trenton. What's going on over there? A convention? <laughs> I wonder who that can be at the door. I'll just take a peek through the curtains here. Mmm, looks like a peddler. Oh, well. Uh, how do you do? Uh, my name is George Stevens. I am the kingfish of the Mystic Knights of the Sea. I don't need a thing, thank you. Good day. Oh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, I am the head of the lodge. Well, I don't want to join nothing. Uh, well, listen, uh, uh, I want to talk to you about Madam Queen. Oh, Madam Queen. Come right in. Oh, uh, yeah, thank you. Nice place you got, you. Yes, of course it's plain, but we must be satisfied with what we got. Yeah, I exactly the same way myself. I keep saying to my wife, I say, honey, if we just had a little more than we got now, I'd be perfectly satisfied. I tell her that. <laughs> but uh, getting back to Madam Queen, uh, what I want to find out... Did you know Madam Queen very well? Oh, sure. I know her when she run a beauty shop in Harlem. 
You see, Madam Queen and my wife have been friends for years. Oh, she's very nice. I like Madam Queen. Oh, sure, and the only reason that I come over here was to have a talk with you was to find out... Oh, excuse me, there's someone at the door. Oh, that's all right, that's all right. Take your time. I ain't no hurry. Uh, uh, hey, look through them curtains. Don't open that door. Don't open that door. Well, what's the matter? I, I just looked out the window. I know that man. You can't let him in. You can't let him in now. Oh, well, why not? What's the matter with him? Well, uh, to tell you the truth, lady, look here. I, 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 don't, I, I don't want him to see me here. You don't want him to see you. Oh, uh, look here. Now, now, now don't, don't let him in. Uh, where can I hide? Well, why do you have to hide? Oh, uh, now, now, look here. Listen, I, I'll, I'll explain everything to you. Mm-hmm. You don't mind if I get behind the sofa, do you, and lay down on the floor? Well... Uh, and don't say nothing to him about me being here, because that'll mess up everything. Remember, now, I ain't here. I don't like this monkey business. I'm coming. I'm coming. Uh, how you do? Uh, I thought for a minute you wasn't home. Is you Mrs. Ralph Rogers? Oh, yes, I am. I is Box 27. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Box 27. Come in. Yeah, thank you. Oh, well, that's my dog. Uh, Bruno, come on in the house now. Come on. That's a good doggy. Yeah, that's a nice dog you got there. Now walk right in. Yeah, come on, little doggy. Come on over here with me while I sit on the sofa. Uh, do you live in Harlem? Well, I stays there part of the time. Yeah, well, what business are you in? Well, I kind of semi-retired. Uh, <laughs> and then I hangs around the lodge there called the Mystic Knights of the Sea. Now, about Madam Queen, I want to ask... Did you say that you was a member of the Mystic Knights of the Sea? Yeah, that's right. Do you know a man there by the name of Stevens? Yeah, sure, he's the kingfish. Uh, he's on his way to Grand Canyon right now. Uh, now about Madam Grand Queen... Grand Canyon? Yeah. Yeah, he likes to get down in a hole and get away from troubles and worries. Oh. Yeah, he's probably laying around now in some low spot looking up wondering what's going to happen to him. <laughs> now about Madam Queen. Uh, hey, doggy, hey. Hey, hey, come here, come here, come back here. Where are you going, doggy? Come here. Look at that, he wanted to go back at the sofa there. Mm-hmm. Well, Miss Rogers, the reason I come here to see you was that... Must be something back at this sofa he wants. Yeah. Uh, most likely old soup bone. <laughs> now, as I was saying, I, I want to uh, come here and see... Uh, wait, all right, all right. If you want to go back at the sofa, go ahead. I wonder what he's after. Oh, it's nothing. Yeah, you show sure something didn't crawl under there. <laughs> uh, anyway, Miss Rogers, what I want to do is to find out how to... Oh, oh! Uh, uh, by any chance, have you got two dogs in the house yet? <laughs> to tell you that... Uh, that uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Chair. I'm going to see what goes on back there. Let me get this sofa out. <sighs> so, it's you, huh? Just stop by here on the way to the Grand Canyon. <laughs> Kingfish, get out of here. What is you doing here, anyway? Well, now, take it easy. I can explain everything. I wish I knew what it's all about. Yeah. Bruno, quiet. Yeah, start talking, Kingfish. Yeah, well, I can explain everything. I knowed you was looking for Madam Queen, and I wanted to help you. You knowed I was going to get some money, and you wanted to help yourself. No, I didn't know nothing about the money. I didn't know nothing about the $600. (laughs) How'd you know it was $600? Well, now, listen, I'm going to talk to you like a brother. We can even get back to that sister stuff. (laughs) Now, wait a minute, Wade. Talk to me nothing. You get out of here, you big double-crossing, no-good chiseling loafer. Yes, get out like he says. I will not have anyone in this house that is not a gentleman. Get out. Yes, ma'am. Leaving right now. Goodbye. I'm uh, sorry this thing happened. Uh, you know, I thought there was something strange when he wanted to hide. I'll not talk to a man of that type. Yeah, I don't blame you. There ain't nothing worse than a low-type man. <laughs> now, Miss Rogers, uh, I got your letter addressed to Box 27, mm-hmm. and I is awful anxious to get hold of Madam Queen. Mm-hmm. Here's a report. Well, you may not know it, but she used to live here. And she used to run a beauty shop right in Trenton. Yeah, that's her, all right. That's her. Of course, I don't know where she is myself. But I know somebody that I was positive can tell you right where she is. Oh, that's great. Who is that? Well, the fella she used to go with, a big bum named Andy Brown. <laughs>
Be sure to be with us next Friday at this same time when Amos and Andy actually find Madam Queen. Yes, she's back. Be sure to hear Madam Queen with Amos and Andy next Friday night. Our program is broadcast to our armed forces everywhere. This is Harlow Wilcox, and before we say goodnight, one more important word. Save used fats? Who, me? Much too much trouble. Too much trouble? Our fighting men out there are going to a bit of trouble, too. Would you count it too great an effort to help save their lives? For the used fats you save are indispensable in the making of precious sulfur drugs and in the manufacture of armaments. So important are they that the OPA has authorized your dealer to pay you two meat points for each pound of used fats you turn in besides the regular cash price. So do save that fat, every drop, and rush it to your butcher. Thanks. I thought you'd see it that way. Good night. (laughs) 